Hey guys, it's Max, and we're back with Battle Code 2015. In this lecture, we're going to make minor factories. Let's encapsulate the beaver mining actions and moving around so that we can share it. Call it mine and move. And we'll put this in here. It wants us to add a throws declaration, so we'll go ahead and do that. If rc.getType is robot type.miner, then we'll do the same thing mine and move. But if it's a beaver, we may also consider doing some construction. We may want to construct a building in a random direction. So let's actually make this a method. We'll call it get random direction. We'll have it return this direction. OK. So, if rc.getTeamOr, the total amount of ore that the team has already, is greater than robot type dot minor factory dot ore cost, that is, if you have enough ore, then we'll do the other checks that are necessary to see if we can build the building. We can see build requires is core ready and can build. If rc dot is core ready and rc dot can build, now we need a direction. Let's get the direction to begin with. Here, we'll call it builder, and we'll get a random direction using the method we just made. So if we can build in that direction, robot type dot minor factory, then we can go ahead and do so. That'll produce the third type of unit here, the minor factory. So we need another else if RC dot get type. is robot type dot minor factory. The minor factory does something similar to what the headquarters does. It just spawns units. It would make sense to make a method for that so that they can both share it. However, the method is slightly different. For one unit for one building, we want to spawn beavers, and for the other one, we want to spawn miners. That's the only difference between the two, so we pass that in as an argument. We can see that in the new method that's created, the argument is robot type. I'll just call it type. So then the type that you build in this method is just type. We can make use of another method we have already to get a random direction. So you can see that even these methods that we, that we define can call other methods we define. Any level of depth is fine. And we'll paste that in. So now we can spawn units in any direction of any type. OK. So now the miner will be spawned by the miner factory. The miner will mine and move around. Let's see if this works. We should see a rapid exponential increase in the number of Furbies and the number of miners. 
Did I say Furby? I think I meant Beaver. The client is not working. We'll try again. This time we'll play player three against Alex test player. Okay. So now we see a miner factory being constructed. It's at half health until it's fully complete. Then it can start producing miners. And here they go. The miners are building. As the miners are built, the rate of ore production increases and more miners can be produced. One thing that's cool about this is that if the rate of Furby, excuse me, if the rate of beavers and miner production is high enough that the mineral count is low, then no more miner factories will be produced. But if the amount of minerals increases, then more miner factories will be built. This offers a sort of natural ratio between the number of miner factories and the number of miners, ensuring that we have a large number of units. All right, very effective. The next thing to do is to keep the enemy from getting so close to us. We'll build a method for attacking. That'll be in the next video. Hope this helps. Bye-bye.